we are looking at the beautiful Founders Hall on Girard College's beautiful 43-acre campus, founded in 1833. Founders Hall was actually completed in 1847, built 1833 all the way to 1847. As we will take a look at this campus and stroll through the 43 acres, we want to note the buildings and the classrooms for the Girard College took some time and designed to construct with their expensive Greek Revival stone architecture, but were ready and opened on January 1st, 1848, under the provisions of Stephen Girard's will, supervised by the appointed trustees, including banker and financier, Nicholas Biddle. We're in the Fairmont section of Philadelphia, just outside the original city borders. As we go around to the front of the building, we see a statue of Stephen Gerard with some children. Stephen Gerard's vision was actually for a school for poor white orphaned boys at the time, uh, which he thought educating an entirely underserved population. We'll get back to the conversion of this school into the modern age a little bit later. Right now we're just going to take a look at some of the architecture of some of the original buildings. As we tour this campus we're going to see extraordinary architecture uh, also from the Art Deco period. And as we make our way through, we look at some of the original dormitory and housing buildings. The 43-acre campus is surrounded by a 10-foot wall, which was the idea of Stephen Gerard in his will. And today, the original wall actually still exists. A little bit about Stephen Girard. He was born in the seaport city of Bordeaux, France, 1750. Died in 1831. He was the eldest of nine children. He arrived in the city of Philadelphia in May 1776 during the momentous summer of the American Revolutionary War and remained there for the rest of his life. During his 55 years in the city of brotherly love, he became the wealthiest American of his time and the fourth wealthiest American of all time, adjusted for today's dollars. In 1777, at age 27, Gerard married Mary Lum and remained married to her until her death in 1815. They had no children that lived past infancy. The initial success in business and the source of his first fortune was international shipping and merchant activities. He sent his cargo sailing ships, crews, and captains worldwide trading ports. He deposited his growing wealth into the First Bank of the United States and had an official relationship with the United States Department of the Treasury and its domineering first Secretary of the Treasury, the newly appointed Alexander Hamilton, under the administration of the first President, George Washington. Here's a look at some of that wall that we were talking about. It surrounds all 43 acres. 
and is the original wall. Quite outstanding. It separates this 43-acre campus from the neighborhood itself. And as we can see, some later period buildings. Through the ages, Gerard College has evolved immensely, starting out with required workshops for apprenticeship, and today, a college preparatory school, boarding school. We're now inside a beautiful Art Deco building. This is what was the chapel. The organ is above the ceiling. This is now a meeting hall and a gathering place for the students, an assembly hall. But was a church, a chapel? This building was built, it's Art Deco, in the 30s, during the Depression, such opulent wealth. Stephen Gerard left about $7 million to the city of Philadelphia. Uh, part of that was to fund the college, which is currently administered, the, the fund, the trust fund by the city. At uh, that time, that was actually making him the richest man in the country. We see the bells lined up on the counter. And the inscription in the back. Keep silent before him. God is in his temple. Trying to get a grand view of this temple as we exit. The ceiling was Egyptian, by the way, and then we had the Roman columns and Greek columns on the side. As we leave the temple, or the former chapel, we're in the vestibule area where there are some inscriptions on the wall. I see we can't quite make these out. They are religious based, as this was the former chapel. Uh, Gerard College today does not endorse any particular religion. They do support the beliefs of all of their students. And then we're going to take a look at the floor. Gorgeous Art Deco. The door in the background. We got a couple of vases there in the corner. And the tour guide was bringing to our attention some of these markers on the floor. These are parables. Nine parables. Can't quite make them out, but we can see them on the floor. Try to zoom in on one of them. But we're just looking at some beautiful Art Deco detail. The doors are stainless steel. And out the door we go. Back to the stainless steel doors. Some interesting inscriptions. A 
And then we'll make our way around to the end of the building. So as early as the 18, mid-1800s, uh, the idea that Gerard College was for fatherless, orphaned, white males uh, was being challenged. Uh, in Victorian times, it was challenged again. Uh, challenged again in the 1950s. Didn't actually get overturned until the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s. We're taking a look at the gym. Proud. Actually a pretty modern building with some ornamental railing work. And quite a few trophies and banners hanging, showing all their winnings. So our tour guide was telling us during the Civil Rights Movement, Martin Luther King actually came to Girard College to the front gates and gave a speech about the wall surrounding the 43-acre campus being like a wall of Berlin to keep out and segregate the neighborhood, which was mostly an African-American neighborhood, from the 43-acre campus of, at that time, all white male children. Cecil B. Moore was also active. And Gerard College is proud of this heritage. Proud that these leaders were able to come and make changes and keep this school alive and modern and servicing the community that it actually is surrounded by. Take another look at some of these buildings. That's another Art Deco. And the main street here has a wonderful view of all the original buildings lined up. We're going to just do a 360. And then we'll continue down the path toward Founders Hall. Stephen Gerard never had any of his own children. And the school is still administered by the will of the Gerard estate. Administered by the city of Philadelphia. Passing another Art Deco building with a gorgeous entrance. And we'll be at Founders Hall in no time. So Founders Hall is considered one of the most impressive and monumental Greek revival buildings in the United States. Its innovative internal structure makes it a remarkable blend of structural engineering and architectural design. Again, it was built 1833 to 1847 by Thomas U. Walter, 
architect. Thomas U. Walter was the architect of the Capitol building. When he was finished with Gerard College, they were so impressed with his work, they had him go ahead and design our, our Capitol. The guide told us that the Founders Hall was actually the second most expensive building in the country, second to the U.S. Capitol at that time. We're looking at coursed marble ashlar, a Corinthian peristyle colonnade with octostyle porticos, four square vaulted rooms to a floor, stairways to corners, low segmental groined vaults in lower rooms, and the domes under the roof provide structural soundness and maximum space. Founders Hall does house the sarcophagus of Stephen Gerard and the Stephen Gerard collection, probably the best documented group of furnishings owned by an American of the 1700s and early 1800s. As you can see, we just can't get enough of this building. The scale is difficult to capture. The building is huge. Take a quick peek at the skyline from the top of the steps before we make our way into Pounders Hall. Of course, the doors to Pounders Hall are also massive. And here we are. No disappointment. Staircase to the right and to the left, and Stephen Gerard straight ahead. On one side, we've got the colonial American flag with the flag of the city of Philadelphia. And on the other side is the American flag today with the, fla the uh, flag of France. This is obviously the oldest building on campus. Beautiful detail. Woodwork, the floors, the columns, and the size of the rooms. Let's go into the original library. So as we walk in, it's hard to see the height, but the roof or the ceiling on this is very high. All four walls have painted tops. And as we can see the library itself, the books and the stacks are just below these, these beautiful paintings. These paintings represent Stephen Gerard's life different stages of his life. Our guide tells us the bookcases actually come from about the 1850s and are not original. Of course, the view out this window is original. Just a beautiful preserved room As I've documented various historical buildings in Philadelphia, it's interesting to see how each one is preserved. Here we are on the campus of an orphanage that still functions basically as such today. 175 years, almost 200 years, functioning and servicing poor orphans of Philadelphia and educating them.
and today getting them into college and getting them into upper class. Wonderful vision and dream. Stephen Gerard, visionary. If you like Gerard College, if you like the idea of Gerard College, please look them up online. Check out their website. Consider making a donation. Take the tour. Ask questions. I could never cover everything in this particular video. This is just an introduction to Gerard College and Stephen Gerard and a little taste of Philadelphia architecture and American history. If you like this video, please subscribe, check out my other videos, and learn everything Philadelphia. And our final walk down the steps.